I have a Wally Grow planter right here that has a Scandapsis Trubii Moonlight in it. It's not looking the greatest right now, so the plan for today is to remove it from the pot. I want to uh, take individual leaf cuttings, propagate it in water so I can get that plant looking uh, bushy and full again. The plan is to replace it with a bunch of kind of random Hoyas that I had uh, upstairs that, yeah, I just want to combine them together just to make a nice mixed pot of Hoya. I've done this previously with Pothos and I just like the way it looks. So yeah, just change it up a little bit, see how they do in the Wally Grow planter here. Um, so yeah, let's start uh, chopping stuff up. I really like these planters, but the one frustrating thing is this little cover button, it always falls off. See, watch, I'm gonna have to fix this today too. So put it on, okay, it stays on, but watch. As soon as you take it off, there it goes. It's on the floor. I have to uh, climb through the uh, forest here to find it again. So uh, let's take it off the hook. The nice thing about these pots or what I like about this pot is it uh, has an insert with these perforated holes. So it does have uh, adequate drainage in this cute little insert. This morning I was trying to figure out which plant I had in this uh, uh, little planter before the Scandapsis uh, trubii and I did have an exotica. It did get thrips a couple years ago and I had to remove it uh, and then I potted this up. So um, yeah, I'm just gonna start taking some cuttings. I have previously propagated it. All I'm gonna do is cut in between two nodes, something like that. Uh, you can see here is a new little branch starting as well. So I'm just going to take individual uh, node and leaf cuttings. So here's a leaf, I'm just gonna cut that right here. So I'm gonna place this in water. It will uh, produce some roots from these aerial roots or from these nodes. And that's all I'm gonna do is just go kind of up the cutting here, taking all these leaf node cuttings, individual leaf node cuttings. And then once they produce roots in water, then I'm going to pot these all up together. And that's how uh, you'll get a nice bushy plant from individual node cuttings. This one will just continue to produce a vine up here, but like this one, you can see it will uh, start to produce its own new vine. So if you take a leaf cutting, it will produce one or its own new plant. This is what's called a wet stick. I don't know why it's called that, but it's uh, basically a leafless node. It will start to produce uh, its own root system as well as a new growth point from that node. I'm not going to uh, save this just because I have too many other propagations, but you can plant this in sphagnum moss or perlite, uh, like a perlite prop box, and it will grow into its own new plant. But I am simply just taking these individual leaf cuttings today. So I'm just gonna finish cutting these up and then I'll put them in some water. So I have my little, so I have a pile of uh, single leaf cuttings, but I just wanted to show the root ball. Uh, it looks actually pretty good. So I've taken all the leaves off and it's got some really healthy roots. So I'm happy with uh, how it's performed in this pot. So I got my old crusty propagation container, just sticking these in the water. And hopefully they produce roots. I know I've had some difficulty with the Scandapsis Jade Satin in the past. It's usually uh, very slow to root in just straight water. I've had really good success with my perlite prop boxes. Uh, but I'm going to propagate these in water. I'm going to run upstairs and grab a pothos cutting that I have uh, currently propagating in water. If you've never done it before, uh, pothos are known to have a natural, uh, a natural rooting hormone. Um, they, they, I guess, release it in the water. So if you have difficulty with rooting any plant in water, just grab a pothos cutting, stick it in, and that should help with the uh, rooting process. Okay, here's my pothos. Got a nice little root coming in, so I'm gonna stick that in water and hopefully these will produce some roots. The Hoyas that I have selected for this mix pot is the Crinkle 8, and I believe this is just a Carnosa leaf with some little dimples in it. I could be wrong. This leaf looks a little bit different. It doesn't have the little dimples or not as prominent as the other one, so I don't know if it's reverting or what. It's still a beautiful leaf. Not too sure which variety this is. I forget the name of it, but it's got a nice kind of silvery green leaf. Here's a combination of just the regular green carnosa leaves, which uh, came from the plant that I have upstairs. And then here's one little uh, Chelsea cutting. It's got a little baby leaf. And then this is the Hoya morellii. It's got these uh, larger 
beautiful leaves, which uh, I'm pretty excited to combine all of these. Hopefully I can get them all in one pot. The thing I'm most concerned about this little project is the size of this pot. Hoyas generally like a smaller pot, not necessarily root bound. They just like a smaller pot. And if you have something that's too large, there's just way too much soil in the pot and it doesn't uh, dry out uh, you know, fast enough if it's in like a smaller pot. So I have to be really careful about how much water I give this as I don't want that soil to be waterlogged. Otherwise, you're, uh, you're gonna run into the root rot issue as Hoyas have very um, kind of fibrous, very thin root system. So because of that, I'm going to be using uh, Promix's cactus and succulent mix as well as their orchid bark. So maybe like a 50-50 mixture. Just gonna add um, some into the bottom of the pot here first. So I'm gonna be planting the Morelii here first just because it's not planted or placed properly in this pot. So I'm gonna to have to pot it up a little bit deeper in this one, just so these, uh, the leaves are just above the soil line. So I'm going to try and keep it intact as best as I can. The soil is really dry. Actually, I'm just gonna break it up a little bit. And then I'll just pot it, I think, at the back. I'm gonna break up these roots or sorry, break up the soil. I'm gonna try and keep the roots all intact here. And I will place this at the back, just so it kind of hangs over the side. Now I'm going to take the next largest cutting. There. So I'm gonna seat that pretty deep in the pot. Now I think I'm going to put the, uh, the crinkle eight in next. I thought, just by looking at this pot, I thought I was gonna have a ton of room with all of these uh, individual plants. Okay, where's my pencil? Every video, my pencil. Okay, it's, I should really have a checklist of things to do before I start videos, but for the most part, I just wing it. I just grab the camera, start filming. I, I will sometimes write down like topic ideas, but I, I don't usually have like a script just kind of main points that I want to cover. It's actually a really nice root system on this one, which is nice to see. And just so you see how thin a Hoya's root system is. So you can see why if you don't have it in the correct soil, or if you have a pot that's too large and it's retaining moisture for too long, you can see how easy it is for um, these types of plants to get root rot. Okay, so now I'm going to put this on the side, just like this. This is gonna be one full pot. Actually, I'm gonna push it back a bit. Okay, a little worried now because I still have two more pots. Might have to reevaluate what I'm doing here. I thought I was gonna have like a ton of room, but it's not looking like it's gonna be the case. So I'm just trying to loosen up as much soil as I can. I hope these survive <laughs> as well. Okay, I might put that off to the side a little bit. And then I'm gonna put some soil in just at the back on the bottom. Just kind of underneath this one. And then I'll, there. So there's soil underneath the Morelii. I'm going to place this one right here so it's kind of at the level of the soil. And now I'm gonna try and stuff these guys in. And then I'll finish off with the... Okay, so this one will be fine because these are all individual Carnosa cuttings. So I place them in this pot so that I can get a bushy pot of Hoya, but um, it's actually quite easy because I'll just plant them individually. I can break them apart and I can just place them wherever I want. So I'm gonna put some kind of in the front, making sure all those little roots get in there. I want the silver one to be in the very front of the pot and hanging down, uh, just 
cascading, so at least you can see it. And then the rest of these carnosa cuttings will go along the side. This is, I'm pretty excited about this. This is gonna be a nice full pot of Hoya. And I've never seen a mixed pot like this before, so this is awesome. Okay, I just broke a little leaf off there. Not a big deal. I'm gonna put this one at the back. The problem is, is how I'm going to fill in all the soil. I love it already. Okay, and then this little Chelsea, I'm gonna put on the side here as well. Okay, perfect. Now, this little guy, this will be easy because he'll, this will be easy because it'll just go in the front. Small little root system on this. Like, look at these roots. Teeny tiny. I'm going to make a spot right in the front. Perfect. Yeah, that is pretty, pretty good. Now, I'm just going to put the soil in the pot. Probably not going to be very pretty. I'm just going to dump it in. Hopefully I don't break any leaves. Just going around the plant. Okay, this is pretty full. I might have to come in through this side back here. Just placing soil. I'm just kind of jiggling it down. It'll fill in the gaps there. I can add more soil in afterwards once everything is kind of positioned properly, situated nicely. Okay, here's a little gap right here. I'm just gonna add some soil in right here. You definitely want to have a little potting mat or something because if you don't, there's going to be soil everywhere. I sprayed off the leaves and I gave it some water to help settle the soil, but look how gorgeous and how good it turned out. All these different pots, like four different just random pots of Hoya combined into one arrangement here and it just looks absolutely stunning. Like all these uh, different variations in the leaves, the, uh, the size, Everything just complements each other. I think it looks absolutely amazing. It definitely exceeded my uh, expectations um, and how it's gonna look. So really happy with how it turned out. It's absolutely beautiful. Let me know down in the comments if you've done any uh, combining of plants in the past, but uh, yeah, I'm just, I'm actually blown away right now at how good this looks. I just added a little piece of tape to the cap. That thing ain't going anywhere now. Okay, so let's hang this, whoops, on the hook and see how it looks. Okay, it's tough doing this with one hand. Okay, yep. Amazing, absolutely gorgeous. Okay, you've got to be kidding me. I wish I would have done this sooner. What a beautiful pot of Hoya. I'm gonna adjust one of these grow lights here as well to get some more light just on top, just like that. Whoa, jeez, this, okay, a little tipsy. I'm gonna put that back up on there as a support. That was clearly holding this uh, fern leaf cactus up. Okay, just one more angle. This is what it looks like. Okay, I got all my humidifier mist, but. I think that's gonna be pretty much it for this video. Let me know down in the comment section what you guys think of this Hoya mixed pot. Uh, yeah, if you have any other comments or questions, please leave it down below. Otherwise, thanks again for watching my videos. Take care, everyone. Bye.